What's up, everyone? Back for another episode of Victory Lap. Today we got a special guest. He was a second-round draft pick by the Cubs. He's a third-ranked overall prospect right now. Brennan Davis. Brennan, how are we doing today? I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good. Uh, so you're from Arizona, correct? Grew up there your whole life? Sure did. Okay, so uh, what's baseball like there? I mean, I'm sure you've seen uh, baseball in, like, California, Florida, you know, is it kind of like those areas where it's like pretty crazy from the jump? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely the the groups that play year round. Like the, mm -hmm. I saw a ton of California guys just just grind year round growing up, and that was never me. I was I was a two sport athlete, so I never really experienced what they experienced growing up. But there's definitely right. groups of people in Arizona that did do that. Right. Being from the Midwest, it's like always odd to hear from people who like you guys are able to play sports year round outside outdoor sports. So um, I, I always wonder this with people who like make it big. Um, at what age did you get the feeling that you had a chance and not like, you know, your junior year, you were OK, I'm highly recruited by colleges. So I have <clears throat> a chance to go to the next level or I'm going to play in college. At what age do you think you for yourself, did you feel like, damn, like I could be drafted out of high school? Like I have a chance to go play in the major leagues. Uh, I always I expected big things out of myself, but like it never really occurred to me that I could skip college and go pro until probably right. my senior year, probably my wow. senior year of high school. Really, kind of, kind of a late bloomer. So I didn't get recruited college wise until my junior summer and that was just like a few small schools and my big schools didn't come till my senior fall. And that's when I made my decision to go to university of Miami, baby. <laughs> okay. That was my other question is that's where you would have went if, if you would have yeah. went to college. Um, so you were, it was kind of like, you know, steady, steady high school, high school, and then took off. And then you went from, I mean, a summer where you said it was small schools at first, your junior year to, being drafted by the second round of the MLB that's it's pretty absurd yeah it, it was uh it was a lot in the one year <laughs> that's for sure I had a big decision <laughs> I wasn't at that point I wasn't sure if I was going to continue to play basketball my senior year or if I was going to focus mm -hmm. on baseball I ended up quitting basketball and focusing on baseball so it's a uh, makes sense it's a hard decision probably it, I would say it turned out well though yeah I think I made the right decision so uh, you also played some basketball, like growing up in the, in the high school too. Uh, what position did you play, and like, how would you compare it to how good you are at baseball? Um, I definitely pla pla practiced basketball a lot more. <laughs> I was always <laughs> in the gym. I was always working. I just felt like my skill set hasn't translated as well as it translated in baseball with the amount of time that I put in. So, I mean, it's just crazy to think if I would have spent all this time playing just baseball, how, how good I'd be right now. And it just goes to show that I have that much room to improve. Right. And a ton of natural talent. If you are splitting between two sports and still get drafted straight out of high school. Yeah. I appreciate it. That's pretty fucking crazy. I'm sitting over here. I can't play a sport, and you're, you you <laughs> took basketball super serious. Then you get drafted in the second round of baseball, man. That's that's awesome, though. I saw some of the players that you played against in Arizona. I mean, you were playing some. Did Did you ever get looks for basketball too, by small I colleges did. or? Yeah, it would have been like Ivy League schools like Yale or Cornell, but mm -hmm. that's just as much as I love education. I wanted to play in front of a little bigger stage. Right, right. Did you? Uh, did they offer you to play baseball and basketball? Any of those schools? No, it would have just been either basketball or the other schools that are offering me baseball or just baseball. baseball. Right. Yeah. Damn, that's pretty crazy. Uh, what was the feeling like when you signed that contract? When you heard your name drafted? You're what? How old were you when you drafted? Eighteen or nineteen? Eighteen. Eighteen. So you're eighteen, drafting the second round of the MLB. Like that's got to be surreal. Like. Like, damn, I mean, that's that's just crazy to think about. No, it was awesome. Uh, just having gone through everything I did my senior year and looking back at things and knowing I made the right decision is just really comforting. And it 
it's just a it's just a new chapter i just opened up a new chapter in my life and i'm i'm excited to see where it goes throughout the process did you ever get a feeling like damn what if i slide what if i you know don't get drafted where i'm supposed to because coming out did they give you like a projection area or was it kind of like we don't necessarily know like I know basketball, I mean, there's only two rounds, so it's like you're either here or there. Like, I don't know how baseball necessarily yeah. works like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it was kind of going to come down to if I don't get drafted in the area or for the money that I want, then I just go to college and I live Oh, that's right. College. Baseball, you can go to college. Yeah. College yeah. experience. And it was kind of made, would have made, a... made that decision a little easier. Miami's not a bad place to experience college, that's for sure. <laughs> exactly. So what kind of, uh, like, what would you have to say about the transition process going straight from high school to starting to play in the minor leagues and being a part of the Cubs? Like, what would, what would some of the biggest uh, changes you'd see in, like, your day-to-day regiment come up in your training? Mm-hmm. Uh, the biggest thing was having to – lift and play and do everything every day that was just a shock coming out of high school because high school you have two games two games a week sometimes three and you got to get your body ready to play every day and that was just something that was new to me and it took time and my body had to adjust but end of the day that's what you had to do to be able to play play baseball every day and it's just the grind of the off season and heavy lifting and just great great mentors in the Cubs staff that helped you get there. Was it more, did, were there some players that helped you kind of understand the culture? Cause I feel like the Cubs have a, a very good culture in terms of their minor league system and stuff. Were there players helping you out coaches? Was it both? Was there players that you specifically remember that were kind of like, Hey, you know, do this, how this will help you out. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily players that helped me. In the beginning, I think it was more so coaches that took fondness of me and wanted to see me successful. They kind of, like, showed me the ropes, like, hey, like, if you're going to come lift, make sure you do your rollouts before and, like, be ready to go at this time. And Just little stuff that, like, you need to be reminded about when you're 18. But right, I know right. now, of course. But, yeah, they, I think the coaching staff and, like, all our coordinators really helped me get to where I'm at today. Uh, do you like South Bend? <laughs> <laughs> South Bend was a cool town. I mean. Because we're uh, both from there. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I completely uh, understand. Uh, if you're yeah, just, there's no pressure to say South yes. Bend was South. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> South Bend was a cool town. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's a, it's was a cool there a stadium. ton to do in the summer? Yeah, was there a ton to do in the summer when nobody was there? Not really, but the stadium was <laughs> awesome. The fans were awesome. They, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Uh, what was it? That, what was the, that's all that really matters, right? Right. What was the first year like of uh, traveling? I mean, I'm sure you probably went some places. I know South Bend Cubs, like they always have a lot of fans, but you probably went some places that I don't know, maybe not, but probably had no, not a lot of fans. Like, was it crazy yeah. just going to different city, different city, living in these hotels every night, you know? Yeah. Beloit, Wisconsin, Clinton, Iowa, just some bad, <laughs> some, some bad minor league facilities <laughs> with, some, with some bad fans to go along with it. Right, right. Yeah, so, it's I mean, even worse than, like, the minor leagues when there's only maybe maybe a couple dozen people that might show up on one night in one of those towns. And, like, the stadium's so quiet that you can hear everything that each of those people are saying, like heckling and stuff. Like, that's got to get pretty annoying. Yeah, 100%. Um. So, like, I saw through some of, like, the, your injury reports um, from last year with your – was it your index finger or was it your – Yes, it was my index finger. got absolutely obliterated last summer. <laughs> yeah, and you were, like, on and off the uh, DL with that, right? 
I sure was. It was terrible. It was such but, a small small injury that kept me out. So that's why yeah. it's so frustrating. I was uh I was telling Michael uh before he came on, I was like kind of comparing it to the the Schwarber injury and like how he came back for the 2016 playoffs and then you kind of did something similar, something special with that. Uh I just thought it was kind of interesting. I'm a big Cubs <laughs> fan, so like I like making those kind of comparisons. That's cool. Did you guys – I haven't heard that one yet, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> How far – you guys won it, right, South Bend Cubs? Yeah. Sure did. Mid- Midwest League champions, baby. There you go. And then you were uh, also minor league player of the year, correct? I was. What was that feeling like? Because um, you got to – I mean, when you get that, you know, the Cubs have a great farm system. So – it's like hearing that that had been pretty crazy too. I mean, you you exceeded, I would assume your your expectations. Obviously, getting injured is never something you want to get. But while you played, mm-hmm. you really performed well. Yeah, I mean, it was it was awesome to be a part of. I'm just happy I was able to help the team come back and help the team in the playoffs. And I think that's really what put it put it over the edge and showed that I had the grit and determination to get the job done. Right, right. Awesome. I thought it was cool that they also got to uh, present those awards at Wrigley for you guys. Um, did you get to meet like some of the some of like the Chicago Cubs players and some of the management and like what were some of the things you got to experience? Yeah, so I had been to Wrigley a few times to like help them with uh, some draft stuff beforehand and just some little stuff along the way, but. To be able to go and see Nico getting ready to play, somebody that I had gotten drafted with the year before, is just so awesome. Mm-hmm. It, was uh, really, it was really something else. That's awesome. So what's, uh, what's the quarantine been like for you? You've been I saw some videos you've been able to still work out. Uh, has it been tough? Has it been easy? I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely tough. Because, like, I don't know, it's hard practicing every day and not having an adjustment to make because you don't have game ABs or live ABs or anything like that. Right, and right. Not being able to be with the guys is really tough also. I'm actually roommates with Cole Roeder right now. So, okay. I mean, we, we push each other. We, we hit together. We're always, like, helping each other whenever we can. But it's still – it's just a tough, tough situation. But everybody has to deal with it, and everybody has different ways to get through it. Mm-hmm. Um, have you heard any updates on anything going on or? You know what, man? I wish I have, but I oh, just wow. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that. Cause, cause we were talking the other day. I mean, they don't have a minor league, you know, season. Like how does that affect, you know, that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of players. Yeah. I mean, there's already been massive cuts in the minor league system because, of just not being able to afford the guys. So it's, right. it's a tough situation for everybody. And I, uh, ulti- ultimately, it's just going to cut into our development. So that's the, that's the worst part of it. 100%. 100%. What was your favorite team growing up? Oh, I would say the D-backs. But the D-backs sucked when I cared about baseball. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be super bandwagon. So I'm not going to say them. Um, I don't know. That's a tough one. I just – I'm not a big team guy. Obviously, the Cubs now, of course. But right, I'm, right. More of a, I'm, more of a, I'm more of a player guy. So I like okay. rooting for players. So who yeah, are your I favorite saw players? I those articles that you talked about looking up to uh, Lorenzo Cain a lot and kind of yeah. off of a lot of what he's doing for the Brewers. I'm a, I'm a fan of Lorenzo Cain. I'm a fan of Dexter Fowler. Obviously, okay. what Trout can do with the bat is mm-hmm. unbelievable. And I was a, I was a fan of Paul Goldschmidt when he was at the Okay, yeah, D-backs. that's a solid one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're too way too young to remember Randy Johnson. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know about him now, but, like, when I was right, young, right. I, wasn't like, I wasn't like a, oh, Randy Johnson. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Would you follow – did you follow the NBA? A lot, because I mean, if you practice that much, were you that into basketball more I, than I follow, you were? I, I I definitely followed it more than I followed baseball. That's for sure. When I was little, who was your team for um, basketball or players? 
I was a big Steve Nash fan. So really, oh, yeah, that's Phoenix. I, like, I mean, they were good. Yeah, that was when that was that was acceptable back then. Right, <laughs> so, right, yeah. I've been a Suns fan, kind of on and off the train as they slowly decline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I Sorry, feel that. Though. We'll be back. We'll be back. Got some good young guys now, so. Exactly. Um, all right, I got a few fan questions. This One of my buddies is, like, obsessed with the Cubs, so I'm going to rattle awesome. some of it off. So he knew – so he re, he's known all about you when I asked him about you. He he wanted me to ask this question. He, think, he asked, how important is it for kids to play multiple sports growing up in high school? Does that help you become an elite athlete of your level? I think there's different routes for everybody to take. But I know me personally that playing multiple sports growing up was my route because it gave me an opportunity to branch out, meet so many different groups of people. It gave me the social skills to be able to talk to every walk of life. It it gave me different muscle groups, different ways I needed to learn how to train my body. And just it's a learning experience. And you don't get that from just playing baseball year round. You got to be able to be fast in basketball, jump high, do all this other stuff. The weight training for basketball is so much different. Baseball, you got to be able to lift heavy. You got to be able to lift daily in the off season. And you got to be able to be more vocal in the field and all, all this stuff. Basketball was big, big into plays, big into strategy. Baseball is a big mental game. You know, there's so, mm-hmm. there's so much different that goes into each sport and I'm sure football would be the same and right volleyball I don't don't know soccer right strategy it's just such a such different aspects that you wouldn't get if you just focus on one sport for sure for sure um he wanted to know how much of a grind is it truly to play minor league baseball we see everyone you know they get drafted second round we think it's all great but how much of a day-to-day grind is it like we were saying you know you go to these different cities it definitely is a grind that is for sure they don't lie when they said the minor league baseball is a grind it's it's tough just driving overnight in a bus to some random michigan or iowa or uh where else do we go? Kentucky, just, just random, random cities that you've never been right. to and playing in front of a crowd and being able to get up every day and know what your intentions are and focus in and get the job done. It's, it's definitely, it's definitely draining over, over the course of a hundred and 162 days in the big leagues, 140 something in the minors. Right. But I mean, the strong will prevail. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's crazy. Cause you know, you're playing when you're playing in the minors, you know, you got to get up every day. And as you were 18, 19 year old, you know, like, like it is your job, but you're still like, I'm playing baseball, but it's also like, it's tough to grasp like what it takes every day to do that because you know, you're used to playing in high school. The last time you played baseball, you were in high school and you were just kind of yeah. like, I mean, you're better than everyone in high school for sure. So it's like, <clears throat> you'd have to put the same into it. Um, all right. The last one was, what are your thoughts on the Cubs overall farm system? Cubs have obviously, uh, produced Chris Bryant, Javi, all those guys. Uh, does the team individually go about your work with you, such as expectations surrounding you? Do they give you a future plan, et cetera? Yeah, they definitely have a plan mapped out for me and what they want my development to look like. They've, had some unbelievable players in the past and that's not a testament to anything like against the Cubs development program, but they've had some great players in the past and we have great players right now. And the Cubs do a great job of putting them in the best situation possible to succeed. And that's what makes them such a good system. That kind of rolled off a, a question. My dad actually wanted me to throw in here, but, with the universal DH possibly becoming a thing this year and possibly for years to come. And it seems like the Cubs like center fielders have kind of been switching in and out. It definitely seems like there's a little bit of opportunity to be had in the outfield out there. And maybe even Jason Hayward is 
maybe has only has like a couple years of like elite baseball left in him. Like, does that is that something that kind of sticks in your mind when you're going day to day, like looking in the future? Or do you try to take it more like one step at a time? I try to think of it as one step at a time because I don't know. You just always have to expect expect the unexpected and be ready when your opportunity presents itself. So I mean, it's hard to say that I'm hoping that they get out of baseball, you know, because right. they're teammates and I want them to do great. And ultimately, I just want the Cubs to win. But if there if there is an opportunity, I'd love to show what I can do. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. Uh, this is – I just thought about this, though. Who was the best basketball player you played against? Ooh, best basketball player I've played against. Tough. Um, probably – I would have to say Nico Mannion, Alex Barcelo, yeah. or Saban Lee. I also played Nico against Mannion. Marvin Bagley when I was in eighth grade. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Just minuscule compared to him. That wasn't really basketball. He was just <laughs> dominating us. Right, yeah. Nico Mannion's a stud, that's for sure. Who's the best baseball player before you got in the minor leagues that you ever played against? Ooh, that's a tough one, too. Um, I would have to say that Shane Baz had some electric stuff on the mound faced him yeah. this past year and he shoves <laughs> was, was there a difference between that's another I mean I'm just coming right now but uh like going against high school pitchers did you go to a regular high school or like a high school that was specialized in baseball I went to a regular or, high school so I mean each time I mean you could play some dude who's not good at all who's pitching and the team's terrible so was that different than going to the minors where it's like every night you're playing who's someone who's fighting for their job fighting to work their way up and like they probably have way better stuff on an average yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. I it's it's a way different way different game of baseball, honestly, because you're going against guys that have scouting reports on you. They have they have elite stuff because they wouldn't have got there if they didn't. And right, you, like you can't take anything for granted. You got to go up there and hunt mistakes and stick to your plan. Yeah, I feel that for sure. Uh, uh, Next my final, my, one of my final questions was, um, I think the South Bend Cubs, like, are elite at, like, fan connections and fan activities. And um, I think – and I, I actually worked – I don't know if you remember Newton Park at all. It's in Lakeville, Indiana. But um, we actually had some of the Cubs ball players come down and meet some of the youth players, like, in the softball and baseball leagues there. That's awesome. I actually got up there late, so I don't know if I was a part of that. Oh, okay. I was just I was just using that as an example to say, like, um, like how important, like, do you feel like, like your responsibility to connect with like younger players and like expose them to baseball? Because I mean, honestly, like a lot of kids up to the age of twelve, like, never really go to like a big league game and mostly yeah. just minor league games. And yeah, I think it's I think it's a huge huge role that we have given the platform that we have to show kids what baseball is and the right way to play and how to treat your fan base because I mean ultimately we don't play if they're not there and right. they're the reason right. we play for sure 100 will there be baseball <laughs> will there will there be baseball <laughs> yeah uh for the big leaguers yeah for the minor leaguers probably not <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. So, I mean, that's that's just wild to think about, you know, because I feel like baseball, the minor leagues, is like there's no other sport that's like it. Football doesn't even have it. Basketball, they're yeah. starting to develop one. But baseball, I, I mean, it's I like – I agree 100%. I just hope they open up the complex so we can get our work in. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, they that's a, like probably the least they can do if they cut your whole season is just be like, look, we can still yeah. get some work in and whatnot. But all right, that wraps it up. I appreciate you coming on, man. We're, we're going to be cheering for you. I'm not a Cubs fan at all, but I might have to become one now. So, <laughs> he's a huge Cubs fan. But we appreciate you coming on. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Of course.